North American Elite Wrestling fan. I am proud to be back with you all. This is your host, Danny Jackpot. We got a lot of great action here that we were originally supposed to bring to you months ago, but due to the hiatus, we had decided to send the roster home, take a break, wait for Call Vision to happen, and come back as Chris Snyder making his way down the ring right now. And wait a second. Monster Messiah right behind him. These two men starting their last man standing match early. These men have been waiting forever to get their hands on each other legally. And they are finally getting the opportunity now. The ref has won the bell. Monster Messiah, Chris Snyder, ever since these two men have lost the World Heavyweight Championship match, Nate Barron and a triple threat at Cajun have been break blaming each other ever since for that loss tonight. Everything's going to be settled here. At Beach Blitz. Chris Snyder, Monster Messiah now just battling here in the entrance ramp in the sandy area that you see that is our beach here at Beach Blitz. Chris Snyder, the powerhouse, the brick house, Chris Snyder, Monster Messiah, Ma Monster Messiah, the, one of the most devastating brutality champions of all time in North American League wrestling. Chris Snyder, a former Canadian tag team champion here in North American League Wrestling, still has yet to find its own way to singles gold. These two men just brawling here to start this match. Can't believe the action we got going on here. Monster Messiah, Chris Snyder, still just brawling. These two big men. Outside of the ring, anything could happen on the outside of the ring. DDT by Monster Messiah. And I don't know if he's in charge of the lighting or what, but the lighting is just so dark out here still. I think the entrance, the, someone, someone needs to tell the lighting guy that we need a little bit more light to see the devastating action here between these two men. But I can see it, from what I can just see, it is devastating here. And look at Monster Messiah now, just driving the head of Chris Snyder into the outside. The referee just begging these men to get to the ring, and Chris Snyder's actually down. The referee's going to start a count. Monster Messiah believes he has the match won, and if he can cut Chris Snyder with those shots, that would be the match. Messiah taunting in the ring. Snyder's at a five count. I, I would be devastated if this would be it for Chris Snyder, but... You would not be able to blame him. He got his hang head baited against that hard wooden plank of our deck of a of a beach prop area. As these men are not as badly in the straight darkness right now. We literally cannot see what is going on. Can someone please tell the lighting department that we cannot see the action here in the middle of the ramp? One, Referee is apparently making a count. I guess that means Snyder is down. I'm being told that Messiah choked Snyder down. Are you kidding me? How devastating is that? Five. Referee's coming at five. Snyder is down still. Referee must have night vision goggles on because I can't see what's happening here as the count is at seven. Snyder is up to his feet. I was able to see it. He even knocks down the referee! He's so mad that the referee had caught him! He knocked down the referee! And Monster Messiah, Chris Snyder after Messiah is getting to the fans. These two men still brawling in the ring. Can't believe what I'm seeing here. Wait, what's Chris Snyder have planned for Monster Messiah now? Oh my god, with a second a top rope assisted choke slam with Messiah sitting there. Chris Snyder now once again, possibly going for another choke slam, but Messiah able to reverse whatever Chris Snyder has planned. Monster Messiah now. Oh, tosses him up in the air and nails a big cutter, Monster Messiah. On to Chris Snyder. And the mass referee is out here now. I mean, the, the nameless referee out here now. Three. Making the count on Snyder. Our other referee, that, that Chris Snyder took it out, is out. And has, has needs to be taken out on a stretcher. That's being happening on the offside. Even though Snyder is down for the count right now. We got a seven count by the nameless referee. He checks on Snyder eight. Monster Messiah can't believe what he sees. Snyder back up to his feet. Chris Snyder now picks up the monster. What's he got planned here? Big fall away slam. Well, he still has his shades on. Chris Snyder making a statement, maybe. 
Monster Messiah now down for the count. What a slam that was by Snyder. The, the weight of Monster Messiah and then just, just the momentum of everything has got to really hurt Monster Messiah. As you can see, it obviously has him down for this count in this last man standing match. This is what the this is the match that both men agreed upon. This is what they both said was 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 fitting. To, to what would make each other feel not not just fitting, but not know if the other man is gonna get hurt. They both feel like they're gonna hurt the other man. Here's Monster Messiah makes it up in an eight count, and now and now taking it to Chris Snyder. These two men, these two behemoths here in the North American Elite Wrestling locker room. Only one of these men are going to be able to claim victor in here in this last man standing match. As Monster Messiah impressing everyone walking the ropes. Shades of the great Undertaker right there. Monster Messiah now picking up Chris Snyder. What's he have planned here? Big back body drop knocks the sunglasses off of Snyder. Snyder now up to his feet. Chris Snyder now. Wait a second, what's he gonna do here? I think he, I think these men are trying to warm up each other. It's whatever you can do, I can do better. Chris Snyder takes the fight, the monster messiah, same move. Right back again, shades the air, take it with the what, rope walking, maybe shades of Grand Metallic if you're watching current WWE. Big fall away slam once again by Snyder under a monster messiah. And it's almost like both these men are rejuvenated in this matchup. These men want to hurt each other so bad in this match. Chris Snyder now. Wait a second, what's he going to do? I think he was going to let the count go, but Snyder now just beating down on Monster Messiah right there with fist and kicks. Snyder now picking up Monster Messiah right here. And big shots to the abdomen. Oh, just repetitive shots by Snyder and a big uppercut. A hot duking. Snyder misses the big kick. Monster Messiah able to capitalize. He has a clothesline. Snyder smartly rolls out of the ring. This this man's only been in a year college for a couple of years with so many matches under his belt. Showing a lot of ring veteran veteran is there, but getting back in the ring wasn't too smart of Snyder. <laughs> So they call up there, Monster Messiah. Had Snyder down. Snyder wants to get around the ring, but going right back in the ring, Snyder wanted to fight. I mean, that's the kind of guy Snyder is, but Monster Messiah. I, I, also a monster, though. He likes to be like that, but I think he's a, a little bit more calculating monster than, than, than most people give him credit for. I'd like to mention the, the men, these men had such a bad brawl. At our last pay-per-view, Lucha Fiesta, his impressive suplex victory by Snyder, had such a massive brawl in the back that when the Mexican police showed up, they decided to ban both men from Mexico or they would face, face serious charges for what they were doing to each other. And that was not on each other's men to put those, put those charges. That was on the country of Mexico. That was the country of Mexico themselves putting those charges on these two men. As Monster Messiah is down for the count, last man standing, if you can't answer the 10 count, you're not going to win this match. And Monster Messiah needs to answer that 10 right now. Snyder believes this match is over. And maybe Snyder doesn't want to take any more punishment. And Snyder believes he has this match won. Turned his back, Monster Messiah up to his feet. Back body drop, Snyder should have... Got a little cocky there, and now Monster Messiah counting to the fans. The Snyder is answering a 10 count of the referee, or he has to attempt to answer the 10 count, I should say. Referee's count now. That was at a 3, now at a 4. Snyder down, Monster Messiah eyeing up Snyder. Maybe believing that this is it in this last man standing matchup. Already a, a referee was not able to get back up to his feet. Stretcher it out because of what Chris Snyder had done to him. The count is now at eight, but Snyder's up the one knee. Monster Messiah locks, and then back body drops Chris Snyder right back down the mat. Picking up Chris Snyder right now. But Snyder able to reverse whatever Monster Messiah had planned. And Monster Messiah tries to roll out of an STO, maybe avoiding the count of the referee. 
very smart there by Monster Messiah. The man is a former world champion in the RWF. Chris Snyder has never held singles championship gold in his life yet. Chris Snyder now, though, possibly looking for a big choke slam here on Monster Messiah. Nails it. That's got to be it. Monster Messiah now trying to answer a 10 count here. Somehow does after a choke slam. How is Monster Messiah doing this? Snyder can't believe it. Snyder picks him up. Snyder, oh my God, what straight by Snyder. What straight by Snyder, oh my God. Driving Monster Messiah down neck first now. I can't even believe the strength of Snyder. The brick house showing off here tonight. The crowd showing their appreciation of this is awesome chant breaking out in the crowd here in Long Beach, California. Bleak Beach Blitz, Monster Messiah, last man standing, trying to answer the turn count of the nameless referee. He is at a seven. Snyder believes he has this match one. The referee's telling at eight. Nine. If Messiah gets up, I will be impressed. Ten and Chris Snyder and the tombstone, whatever Snyder wants to call that. If he just broke that out of nowhere, I don't know. But oh my God, what a match by these two behemoths. Monster Messiah giving it his all. Chris Snyder giving it his all. Chris Snyder picks up one hell of a win here in North American Elite Wrestling. He had, these two men had just so many things to say to each other. So many very, very rude things to say to each other on Twitter, uh, to each other in interviews. And it was all settled here with that devastating tombstone of Chris Snyder on the Monster Messiah. The Brick House. Chris Snyder picks up a hell of a win. And last man standing, Monster Messiah still down, cannot answer the 10 count. Snyder, what, what a win for Chris Snyder. Beach Blitz kicks off here in a very impactful way. The Brick House getting what he wants here tonight. A big win in Long Beach, California. And there it is telling the fans that it's all him, Chris Snyder, as we got to move on. United States Tag Team Championship match. The Samurai Dragons, the current United States Tag Team Champions, Kai and Chi, are going to be challenged by the Million Dollar Mafia, Hugo Sullivan, and Jay Montero. Both these teams are no strangers to the United States Tag Team Championship goals as the Million Dollar Mafia are the former Tag Team Champions. Not the exact former Tag Team Champions, but have won the championship in the past, I should say. Sorry. They had, they had actually defeated the Tag Team of the Crusade for the championship, lost their belts to Biff Andreas and Alex Snow, who will see late, wrestle later tonight. Coincidentally enough, the tag team uh, that they're that they facing now are, are the team that knocked off Biff and Alex Snow. And that would be Kai and Chi, the Samurai Dragons. Fans are saying the Samurai Dragons are the favorites to win here tonight. The Million Dollar Mafia. The two men, Hugo Sullivan on your right, Jay Montero on your left. These two men, they, they answer to the boss, and we don't know who that boss is. As they await the cha the challenge or the champions, their opponents here tonight. You got Kai on the Kai on the right, Chi on the left, the Samurai Dragon. Samurai Dragons impressive team. The only tag team to win both sets of tag team gold here in North American Elite Wrestling, or I should say silver, as all of our tag gold, all of our championships are the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship is silver. Samurai Dragons, along with Biff Andreas, the only three guys to the hold both championship sets, but these two men are the only team that hold both championship sets. Samurai Dragon, Million Dollar Mafia, Beach Blitz. Big match here. Don't forget if you're not following us here on the Twitter, or if you're not following us on Twitter, twitter.com slash NAEW2020. You gotta be following us on North American Wrestling Twitter to Keep up with all the action. 
If you want to follow me on Twitter, Danny Jackpot Caw. Subscribe to our YouTube if you're not subscribed yet, if you're enjoying what you're hearing. Always releasing North American League Wrestling action. Our next event's going to be live on Twitch, so don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Funny Dan. As the United States Tag Team Championship about to be taken by referee the Todd. I'm sure the Todd had a great pandemic break. Not not having a referee full show. We only got so many handful of referees. One of our new referees already taken out earlier. I didn't even catch his name yet, but Chris Leonard knocked him on his not knocked him so senseless that he had to be stretchered out here. Hugo Sullivan, you're gonna see an obvious size advantage for Hugo Sullivan. Kai and Chi, both the Samurai Dragons, are small enough competitors to be considered for the junior weight division. A championship that the junior weight championship, which is held by Marcus Matrix, a man who's been defending the championship in so many impressive wins, the only junior weight championship still won the. You gotta give him credit there. But just to, just to show you, Hugo Sullivan is a guy who's about 100 pounds over that weight class limit. Kai and Chi, though, good strikers. Also, former luchador athletes. We can, I guess they're always going to be luchador athletes, but they they've tried to take that out of their repertoire. They they don't want to be known for that. They they spent some time in Japan to reinvent themselves. The Samurai Dragons now. The former naval conquistadors. They hate when I bring that up. But I just want to give them credit because that's a great tag team. They were when they were then. As you can see, the, right now in the ring, we got Hugo getting it take the fight taken to him by this is Kai in the ring. Kai. Good. Oh my god, game power bomb there by Hugo and uh, what a snap power bomb right there. Man, a Kai size against Hugo. That, that, that could probably knock him out, but Kai, the United States what well, happened the United States champion up to his feet, but Jay Montero knocks him right back down. Jay Montero not legal man in this matchup. United States Tag Team Championship here on the line at Beach Flip. And oh nice judo toss to get out of that by Kai gonna tag in Chi here. The Samurai Dragons are the defending United States Tag Team Champions. We'll see how long that lasts though after this matchup. Jay Montero Russian leg sweep. Now stomping away on. That is now Chi in the ring. Chi. Oh, big spinning neck breaker right there. Jay Montero now. Oh, big, big move. Shades of Mr. Perfect. Kurt Henning with that maneuver. Jay Montero now. Stomp. What's he going to go for here? Almost just lining up his kick. And oh, a big shot to the gut. Oh, just bringing the, the punishment is the Million Dollar Mafia to this. To the Samurai Dragons here, back suplex, almost with a cork, landing in a very bad way. And Jay Montero now sets him up again. Just it looks like they're working on the back rib cage area of of uh, of of Chi here. Chi though able to reverse and now knocks down Jay Montero. Now has has him some kind of maneuver and oh a sit up power bomb by. Him. Chi, and you gotta give Chi credit there. Using his power moves against Jay Montero is the more smart move to do. Going for some kind of move, but Jay Montero kicks him in the face, gets up to his feet, and then answers the kick. And it gets answered for the kick in the face by Chi. Chi then, with a, with a head scissors takedown, or a hurricane round of takedown, I mean. And these two men now, a nice series of moves right there. And then, after Jay Montero, they get Chi away from him, tags in the much larger Hugo, and Hugo now. Oh, gets knocked down by Chi. Didn't see exactly what happened there. Glitch, glitching on a little camera system there, a little technical difficulty. But either way now, Hugo was able to knock down. Chi gets him down for a two count right there. Fans, not sure who to be behind here in this match. Neither team's really liked too much by these fans. And I, I think it shows here the fans really kind of quiet in this matchup. Or more booze than anything for both athletes. Or both teams, I should say, all four athletes. And the Million Dollar Mafia now going for some kind of tag maneuver here. Double hip toss and state of Connor James play, but goddamn a hip toss by the Million Dollar Mafia. And oh, a maneuver by J. Montero. One, two, three. Oh, I thought we had new tag.
tag team champions. <laughs> and you got to give Kai a lot of credit there. Did not come in the ring to break it up. Must have believed that she was good there. Or I don't know, maybe they had some kind of system in the ring to let each other know if they're good or not. I have no idea. I would have been there to break it up with my tag partner if I was them. But you got to give him credit there that he just knew that that was not going to be it. And Jay Montero now, as as Kai is the legal man now in this ring. Oh, and Kai is driven face first down to the mat. And Kai, oh, dragon screw leg leg whip right there. And Jay Montero, he might have pulled something in his knee right there. He seems to really be hurting. And the Samurai Dragon is now picking up on that, or as I should say, Kai and the Samurai Dragon is really picking up on that. Now going after the knee. Kai now. Has Jay Montero in a bad way here. Picks him up. I can see Jay Montero is whipping on that leg as he ran to that. As he is whipping to that turnbuckle right there. And what is what is Kai going for here? Kai. Top rope. Hurt and roll right there. Cover by Kai. One. Two. And oh, and it's a two count. The Samurai Dragons almost retain the tag team titles. And Kai now. Still has Jay Montero in a bad way. Sets him on the rope right here. What's he gonna do? Irish whip right there. I almost just call that American whip, or maybe a Japanese whip, or a Mexican whip, because uh, they're as confused as I am right now. But, oh, a big devastating kick right there. Martial arts kick, one, two, and oh, only gets two. Credit Jay Montero for kicking out. That is a big kick out. I thought that would have been it. And oh, wait a second now. Speaking of knees, did he jam his knee up right there as he tried to stomp? Going for some hard stomp right there. And Jay Montero rolls out of the way and looks like he almost jammed up his knee. Montero able to capitalize now. What's Montero going to do? Iris whipping him into the ropes. Iris whipping him into the corner of the Million Dollar Mafia. The Million Dollar Mafia, what are they going for here? Oh my God, and rest in peace. Road Warrior Animal who's recently passed away in Road Warrior Hawk. The Doomsday Device, but it doesn't pick them up the win here on Beach Blitz. United States Tag Team Championship still on the line between these two men. I mean, these two teams. These four men giving it their all for these two, for the set of tag team championships here in the United States. Oh, a top rope back body drop. And he just folds him like an accordion for Hugo Sullivan. This is got to be it. And instead, go, is he trying to just twist the head off of Kai? Here goes Sullivan going for a, trying to make Kai tap out, and, and Kai gets his foot on the ropes, and going for a cover now. This could be it. Getting your neck wrench like that only gets two. Here goes Sullivan. Jay Montero looking really good right now. Referee is trying to tell the other two men to get out of the ring. They are not legal. They do. And Kai now. Striking away at Hugo Sullivan. Three big strikes knocks down Hugo Sullivan eventually. And now kicks him all down, kicks him all down. I don't blame him. The much smaller man doing what he can to knock down Hugo Sullivan. Big spinning wheel kick. That big spinning wheel martial arts kick right there. That could be it. Cover on Hugo Sullivan. Referee. One. Two. Three. And that kick knocked down Hugo Sullivan. Enough! The Samurai Dragon is here able to retain the United States Tag Team titles here at Beach Blitz in an impressive tag team matchup as you can hear the crowd boos. And I think they're just booing the fact they don't like this team or either team, but that was a great tag team matchup. Both teams, you know, they're all here for the United States Tag Team titles. And the, and the Samurai Dragon is able to retain here as you on the replays, or as we're watching the replays, Great highlights in the replays. I like can focus on the fans booing right now, booing the great effort, effort, efforts of these both teams. It's a shame, but it's California. We're here at Long Beach. Well, you can't blame these fans for getting up their opinion. That's what they bought the ticket for. As you can see right there, that spinning wheel kick knocks out Hugo Sullivan. The referee even delayed on the count. Referee the Todd trying to get some order in the match. Didn't even catch it. There was a pinfall, but but was able to still get the three. The Samurai Dragons, United States Tag Team Champions for a reason. Big win for Kai and Chi. Did not bring any dishonor or disgrace back to the, the Samurai name. And, and don't forget, 
It was because of that honor and disgrace. They, they didn't even take the rematch with the tag team titles. They lost the belt in such a in such a embarrassing fashion. They felt like they felt like they didn't deserve the shots. Now look at them once again holding the United States tag titles now on top of a tag team division. Samurai Dragons impressed here tonight. As we continue on here at the Slits, Biff Andreas and Alex Snow, the former United States Tag Team Champions, lost the belts because Alex Snow claimed to have flight issues to Mexico. For whatever reason, he was in Mexico City already. He had decided to show up in the United States Tag Team title match to turn on Biff Andreas. This match now going to be held between these two men and Alex Snow with a different look when he show, when he came at the last event. You'll get to see a better look now of more, more camera angles and more closer up. We didn't get to see a better look of him back then. But Alex Snow almost get, came to a whole career renaissance when we last seen him. And I don't know what, what he's doing and why he didn't want to be the United States Tag Team Champion anymore. Maybe that's not what his focus was and what his goals were in North American League Wrestling. He has really stayed quiet on the whole attack of Biff and Dre since it happened. And I think that's why he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't want anyone to know. And maybe he, maybe he doesn't need to give a reason for what he feels. Alex Snow, Biff Andreas, one-on-one -on -one here tonight. Both men wanting this match. Of course, the management, the executive and here at North American Elite Wrestling. Corporate Alien probably also signed that contract saying, hell yeah, that's a match we want to see between two great athletes. Both these men over a decade in CAW. Alex Snow in the ring right now. Oh wait, Biff Andreas. And Alex Snow, as we await, and the fans just absolutely love Biff. They love as soon as as soon as he comes out. Biff Andreas has won world championships everywhere he's been. Biff Andreas is a icon almost here. I would say an icon here in CAW. Maybe that's why. Maybe Alex Snow trying to make his name on Biff Andreas. Biff Andreas got Biff, he asked. Well, Alex Snow's about to get a whole bunch of Biff right now. Alex Snow, he is no stranger to gold himself. He's a former DCO television champion. He's also a former IWT Japanese champion. He's also won the Brutality Championship here in North American League Wrestling. Hardcore Championship with I I IWT Iron Man Heavy, uh, NWA Hardcore Championship and the IWT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship. All hardcore titles. So this man knows how not to just win championships. He knows how to brawl, obviously. Alex Snow is a guy you don't want to be caught in the back alley with. As the referee, the Todd rings the bell. One on one matchup here. Biff Andreas, Alex Snow. As you got an arm ringer by Alex Snow. Working over Biff Andreas in the middle of the ring right now. It's Alex Snow. And actually nails a good neck breaker on Biff Andreas. And hey, Biff Andreas. Not taking out Snow completely credible here. I don't want to say that about Biff. Maybe he's had a little bit of time off during this pandemic. Nice arm drag right there, though. Biff Andreas, though, once you get in between that squared, cir once you're in that squared circle, it really all comes back to you right now. And I would like to mention uh, at Carvation 2, which happened on the Omega Network Pro Omega Production Network. Sorry, I got that wrong. Completely wrong in the name. Uh... We had the Caucasian at Caucasian 2, the North American League Wrestling Divas Championship was on the line. Tara Lee was able to defeat Chantel Queen, Lilith, and and Alexandria Marie at that event. So gotta, gotta give her hats off to Tara Lee once again defending her North American Elite Wrestling. Or uh, yeah, or not, not Tara Lee. I mean Rachel Cross able to defeat Tara Lee, Alexandria Marie at well, that event once again. Rachel Cross defending her Divas Championship, giving her credit there. Biff Andreas now. Oh, got reversed. German suplex Alex Snow. Alex Snow bringing the fight here to Biff Andreas in this matchup. And oh, Michinoku driver by Alex Snow. Bringing Biff Andreas down the ring mat. Driving him down the ring mat. Now just kicking, in his, kicking him in his face. And man, I can't believe that's legal in a wrestling match. Both fist on Hargill's to the face are. I guess all the referee can do is as uh, men go man why but Alex Snow just devastating here against Biff Andreas in the opening parts of this matchup. Biff Andreas trying to fight back now, big elbow to the gut. Alex Snow though seems to have a lot of control over Biff Andreas reverse DDT. Alex Snow really impressing me here tonight. 
Griffin Grace is no slouch. Spine buster by Alex Snow. Cover stacks him up. The referee goes to the cover. Is this going to be it? Griffin Grace by the cut. No! Two! Deep two Alex Snow. Almost catches Biff. Maybe the referee the tallest. They're a little quicker. That could have been three. I think Biff Andreas is completely off guard by how well Alex Snow is wrestling him here tonight. Biff Andreas now trying to slow down the action. Knocks Alex Snow down and goes for a headlock. Very smart, very crafty, the veteran Biff Andreas. Fans almost a little bit in shock now. Happy to see that Biff Andreas has Alex Snow down. Biff Andreas, Alex Snow, both back up to their feet. Alex Snow drop kicks, knocks Biff down. And Alex Snow yells something to Biff. I don't catch what it is. Maybe we don't want to repeat what he said right there. Biff Andreas so able to knock Alex Snow down. Maybe Alex Snow should have been capitalizing instead of talking smack. Biff Andreas, three big strikes. Alex Snow, though, able to just toss Biff Andreas over the top rope. And this match goes to the outside of the ring. Don't forget, it's just a regular singles matchup, so the referee's going to have a 10 count here to work with. Biff Andreas, Alex Snow fighting on the outside of the ring. As all the referee can do now is count as these two men brawling in, in, on the ringside area in front of the steel barricade that blocks these fans off from entering the ring and getting hurt themselves. Big clothesline by Alex Snow. Here at Beach Blitz, we knew that we were going to see a blitz, and all these matches so far have been a blitz. We still got a big World Heavyweight Championship matchup here later tonight. We still got a bunch of other matches here. Biff Andreas, Alex Snow, back, both back in the ring. Biff Andreas, big forearm, catches Alex Snow, knocks him down. That was a huge forearm by Biff. Biff, oh, wait a second, gets reversed. I think Alex Snow maybe lured him into a false sense of comfort right there. Alex Snow. Now, tossing Biff Andreas right out in front of me here. These two men. These two superstars here in North American League Wrestling. Jockeying for the position, both former United States Tag Team Champion, obviously, with each other. Big reverse DDT by Biff right in front of me right now. Tossing him back in the ring. And, oh, before he gets back in the ring himself, Biff Andreas delivers an elbow to Alex Snow. Biff Andreas now going for a big year. A naggy right there. Vintage Biff Andreas. Alex Snow getting covered by Biff. Oh, only a two in Biff Andreas. Can't believe it right there. Fans even can't believe it right there. Biff Andreas now. He's telling Alex Snow it's over. I don't care. Big clothesline. Another big clothesline by Andreas. Andreas now. Catches the kick. Biff Andreas yells here and Nagi one last time. Are you kidding me? Biff Andreas not with the wave of the future. Going for a second year and Nagi. Oh my god. The impact right there on Alex Snow. Going for the cover. One, two. Oh, the off the way. Biff Andreas wins. Knocks the wind out of Alex Snow with that year and Nagi here at Beach Blitz. And I don't know why Biff Andreas maybe didn't nail the wave of the future. Maybe because he didn't feel like Alex Snow was. Part of the future here in North American League Wrestling. And maybe that he's already in the past. That the wave of the future didn't even hit him so long ago. He didn't deserve it. I don't know. Just just speculating here what Biff Andreas was doing. As we've seen to two year Nagi, the first one not enough. Alex Snow trying to fight back in this matchup between him and Biff Andreas. As referee showing the replays earlier. I think the referee, I, I, I think our, our, our broadcast, our broadcast crew accidentally started showing the wrong replays here. Either way, Biff Andreas is able to nail a second year in Nagi. Biff Andreas wins the match over Alex Snow here in Long Beach, California at Beach Blitz. And we are going to move on here. Lamarcus Carter, Nick Gemini. No real story between this match other than both men jockeying position in the North American Late Wrestling locker room. Also, Nick Gemini, the Space Cowboy, the Milk Hunter, has been wanting to brawl with bigger athletes. And right now is a good shot for him to do it. But Marcus Carter at 6'7 is a much bigger athlete. A former All-American champion is Marcus Carter. Nick Gemini, will this be the stepping stone that he needs? Well, Marcus Carter has said in interviews that no, it will not. And also, Nick Gemini, he's going to put, he's going to knock you back into whatever planet you came from. Those are quotes from Marcus Carter about... Nick Gemini and his match here tonight. 
Nick Gemini, and Marcus Carter, as I mentioned, both would like to dock the position here in North American Weight Wrestling, and this is why this match was made. But, but one of these men could be rewarded very greatly with a win here tonight. Nick Gemini has had a has had a shot at some championships here in North American Weight Wrestling has not never came up successfully yet. But he'd like to change his luck and lately he has been on some of a winning streak lost a tables match to incognito and we've kind of seen a new attitude from nick gemini ever since been a little bit more not too happy with things been a little bit more jealous of his girlfriend denise parkinson who is not here tonight he actually told her to stay home so she stay home during this pandemic to stay safe that he has this match under control and nick gemini seems to be not even take well he always comes out of the ring like this is very anime like with these maneuvers of big jeff carter a little bit more serious than this he seems to almost not even be paying attention to lamarcus carter but that is who nick gemini the space cowboy is nick gemini lamarcus carter both both superstars here in north america Link wrestling who i'm very fond of so this is going to be a great matchup i think nick gemini could really pull off an upset here someone call it due to the size difference alone i don't know if i'd call it an upset because i've seen nick gemini beat some bigger opponents nick gemini actually picked up two wins at top asian so you gotta give him credit on that one as this match starts off marcus carter able to fight out of a headlock right away and nick gemini oh look at that and, and marcus carter actually showing nick gemini what he can do and nick gemini actually reverses a hip toss and Lamarcus Carter can't believe what just happened. And instead of Lamar, instead of Lamarcus Carter able to stand there and shock Nick Gemini capitalizes DDT. Moonsault, Nick Gemini doing exactly what he needs to do in this match to win. But let me ref let me go back to what I was saying. Nick Gemini picked the only superstar to win two matches at Call of Asian 2 was Nick Gemini. Nick Gemini defeated Chris Statlander in that great intergender intergalactic matchup that he was in. I, I honestly, I'm so I feel so bad that I forgot the name of it right now. I don't have my notes in front of me. I'm, I have so many other notes that I can't remember the name that he was doing against Chris Statlander, but it was an amazing matchup. And Nick Gemini actually has Marcus Carter down and reeling right now, and I think that first series of reversal has Marcus Carter. Oh, right there, Marcus Carter led Nick Gemini and Nick Gemini that nonstop third offense. He was trying to do finally made him crash and burn in a big way. Marcus Carter much smarter athlete than Nick Gemini in that situation. And I believe that's how Lamarcus Carter always acts more that, that, that smarter ring play than he is that physical ring play. Even though he can get as physical as he needs to be, which he is right now against Nick Gemini. As you can see, when these two men are standing next to each other, just what a difference there is in size. Nick Gemini and Lamarcus Carter. Both men try to rush back in the ring and do. Lamarcus Carter catches Nick Gemini though as soon as he gets back in. And... Oh, Nick Gemini able to fight out the suplex, and Gemini still showing some fight left in him, and Nick Gemini, and Nick Gemini, a furry of offense here, the space cowboy, the mill punter. And he knows what a win would, what a win would do for him, him against what Marcus Carter would do. Would really put him on the map here with North American League Wrestling Executives. Nick Gemini, oh, gets tripped up by Lamarcus Carter. And Lamarcus Carter now. Going for a suplex, but no, gets reversed. Got a ladder match later. All American champion, all American championship between Smokey, the current champion, and Ottawa. Ottawa, who made his statements known on the kickoff of Case in that, that that soon his time would come. And then at Lucha Fiesta, he assaulted Smokey with a ladder. While we have a ladder match between these two men for the All American title later tonight, Nick Jenner with a nice kick right there goes for a cover on Carter. One. Only gets a one count though. Carter with a kick out of one, impressing me right there. <laughs> Nick Gemini now, though, doing exactly what he needs to do to win this matchup. But Lamarcus Carter cuts off Nick Gemini's offense once again. Now, big headbutt by Nick Gemini, and you can see the bites of Lamarcus Carter. Because Nick Gemini is a much smaller man, almost almost takes up the, the whole neck and neck and half his head right there, and that's really got to be. Constructing the, the blood, the oxygen, and the, the blood of the brain, the flow of the oxygen to the brain, really gonna make slow down Nick Gemini, and I think that's exactly what Marcus Carter is trying to do here in this matchup. And a big power slam right there now by Marcus Carter. 
and Connor just kicking. Well, but that actual dirt, but the, 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 the ring mat dirt in his face. But Marcus Carter showing no respect for Nick Gemini right there. And then toss him right in the ring post. Pulls him out and then uses the power to sit out and slam him. One, two. So, and Carter almost pins Gemini. Gemini showed a lot of hard kicking out right there, though. And on Marcus Carter now, Lutez Press. Almost another variation of a steamroller that he does. But Marcus Carter. Oh, and Gemini somehow gets his hand on the ropes. But Marcus Carter cannot believe it. But Marcus Carter seriously believed that he had this match won right there. Nick Gemini, though, really showing a lot of ring awareness by, by get, getting his hand on the rope, just barely breaking up that count. And Lamarcus Carter with another power slam on the Nick Gemini, and Gemini not able to get anything going for him now. Lamarcus Carter is just slowing down all the offense. Oh, and a basement drop kick by Carter right into the face of Gemini. And Lamarcus Carter now telling Nick Gemini to get up. And Nick Gemini, again, much slower than he was at the beginning of this matchup. Nick Gemini, though, still able to out quick Lamarcus Carter there. Nick Gemini now has Carter in a bad way against the apron. And Nick Gemini, what's he going to do here? Nick Gemini, Lamarcus Carter is trying to get out of the ring. Nick Gemini, though. Oh, my God, drop by drop kick by Nick Gemini. This could be it. Lamarcus Carter does not look like he's. He knows where he's at. His eyes are in the back of his head. Carter. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is that it? No. The referee says it was only two. That is one of the closest three counts I've ever seen in North American League Wrestling. I think Carter just out of instinct got his shoulder up. And Nick Gemini even argued with the referee right there. Are you sure that wasn't three? The Todd says it wasn't. This match continues here at the Flitz. Oh my god! How did Carter kick out? Carter now fighting back! I gotta get Carter credit here! How did he kick? So much velocity was behind that kick of Gemini! I thought it knocked him out! Jawbreaker by Nick Gemini! Trying to break the jaw of Marcus Carter! And we know a broken jaw will keep you out for weeks! And Carter now, oh, using his much stronger leg strength against Gemini knocks him down. Carter goes to the cover and only gets one count. I don't think that's gonna keep Gemini down. Fit with Nick Gemini now. I think he took him took, took him for granted and now he just can't believe that he can't keep him down. Carter tosses him into the into the uh, turnbuckles here. What's he got planned? Picks him up, places him there, then go for some kind of big move. Says this is it. Oh my god! Gemini's Almost 12 feet in the air when Carter was standing on top there. And now what's Carter doing? Carter, oh my god! He is just pressing Nick Gemini. He is just pressing the much smaller man. Carter trying to make a point of Nick Gemini and he still only gets two. Carter getting frustrated again against Nick Gemini. What will keep this man down? He's wondering at this point. Again, Nick Gemini, oh my god! Carter just loop as press and, the, and again just keeps punching him. His mask actually ripped open after so many punches and Carter keeps him down for three. Carter just beats on Nick Gemini until he couldn't get up any longer. And Gemini is busted open through his mask. His mask had actually ripped apart from so many punches of Carter were being told. Oh my god. That's how frustrated was with Nick Ge with, 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 with Carter was with Nick Gemini in this matchup. And I gotta give Nick Gemini credit in this matchup. You've seen so much heart. You thought maybe he had won, maybe one of the closest calls I've ever seen in North American Elite Wrestling. Doesn't go in the favor of Nick Gemini. When Marcus Carter picks up a win, and a, a much harder fought win than he thought it would be, Carter doesn't even want to hear from referee the Todd. I think he should maybe give Todd the Todd some credit for, get, for catching that shoulder being up after that drive by drop kick. I talked about this match in the previous one. The All-American Championship ladder match between Ottawa and Smokey. Things have gotten real personal between each other on Twitter. Not nothing. These men haven't said as grotesque as the things that maybe Monster Messiah and 
and Chris Nutter were saying, but these two men have said a lot of more to home comments. A lot, a lot of pride, a lot of Native American pride being brought up in this matchup. Iowa believing that he, from what, from what happened to his people, deserves that. This is why he, this is what he deserves the All-American Championship match for, because his people already had paid for it. And Smokey, a man who has Native American blood in him, completely disagrees with those comments and does, is not awarding Iowa this championship shot. Is giving it to him, he says, so he can show him what being a true Native American warrior is all about. Because don't forget, Iowa claims to be the true Native American warrior. Either way, Ottawa staying at a, a thick six foot five. Ottawa is not a guy that has to be taken lightly, and Smokey is, and I have a lot of respect for Smokey. You know that Danny Jackpot and Smokey go way back. That Smokey may have been off a little bit more than he could chew with Ottawa here tonight. Ladder match rules. You never know what could happen in a ladder match. Ottawa. These fans do not like him. As they wait, they're one of the icons here in North American League Wrestling. This man who's a, one of the biggest debuts in North American League Wrestling history, Smokey. As he makes his way down now, and Smokey again believes that he has, that, 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 that Ottawa he, is, is just dead. That's what he says, it'll leave Ottawa lying dead after this matchup. And, that, and that's not my quote, that's what Smokey says. And I, I don't like saying that, but... If, if someone says it, I'm, I'm going to put I'm let your fans know who's not on the Twitter, who's always be following us all on Twitter, whatever Twitters are. If you follow the North American League Wrestling Twitter, you can go to the follow us. You'll see our whole roster right there. And everyone that's associated with North American League Wrestling. Smokey making his way down in the ring, or I mean in the ring now for this ladder match against Ottawa. And don't forget, Smokey. Again, giving this chance to Ottawa after, after the assault that Ottawa had done to Smokey. After Smokey was able to retain his championship successfully against Evan O'Shea. I mean, I'm not, not against Evan O'Shea, sorry. I was about to tell you about Evan O'Shea's Maple Leaf Championship match against Mike Gallander later. After this, I mean. But Smokey was able to retain his championship and got assaulted by Ottawa at our last event, Lucha Fiesta. He was able to retain that championship against. I believe it was Austin Andy. Yes, it was. Thank you. Ottawa and Smokey. Just these two men starting this matchup here now. The ladder match for the All American Championship. After this, we have Mike Ballander challenging Evan O'Shea for the Maple Leaf Championship. Mike Ballander has assaulted Evan O'Shea after he had won a steel cage match. At Lucha Fiesta, during Mike Ballander's entrance, Evan O'Shea actually assaulted him and returned the favor. Mike Ballander was actually still able to win that wrestle, and I believe Mike Ballander was able to win his match still at Lucha Fiesta in that six-man tag match. So, got to give Mike Ballander credit there. A very worthy opponent for Evan O'Shea's Maple League Championship. That will be next. Oh, the ladder is introduced in this matchup by Ottawa and the Smokey. And that's exactly what makes it a ladder match. Everyone, the ladder is legal in this. As these two men now fighting for the ladder in this matchup. Again, Smokey already tasting the steel the ladder wants. Smokey smartly going for a steel chair and Ottawa goes, what? It's a ladder match. Smokey throws it down. What? I can't believe that. And now Ottawa just eats the steel guardrail instead of the steel chair. And oh, Smokey has asked that fan. Did you get your money's worth? Smokey now has Ottawa down on the outside here. And Ottawa catching a kick of Smokey's dragon. Screw leg whip by Ottawa. Ottawa, the challenger for the All-American Championship. Everything to win, nothing to lose. And uh, both these men eating a lot of steel here tonight. As Smokey now eats the steel post. And I am I still want to know if that steel chair is going to be brought into play later. Don't forget, Ottawa, Smokey, not using the steel chair. After Ottawa argued, the Smokey, it's a ladder match. The Smokey just tosses the steel chair down and makes it eat the steel guard. Well, that's great. All-American Championship. Rookie versus veteran, you can say right here. Ottawa, again, as I mentioned, has everything to win this match. Almost nothing to lose. Ottawa's only had so many matches, a handful of matches here in Kaw. Travel, traveled just right through the ITF training ground before even the ITF even present him. That's how well he did. Now he's in the All-American Championship match with Smokey here at the end of 2020. And he, and he only had to wait that long because of the other pandemic. The pandemic special. They're also going to determine some number one contenders for some championships. I'm sure you can vote for those number one contenders. 
after this event, we will have those poles up. Ottawa Smokey All-American Championship ladder match. This match brought back into the ring. Smokey now. And what's he gonna do to Ottawa here? Toss him on the outside of the ring. Smokey. Oh, nice springboard drop kick. Ottawa actually lands on the steel chair. And Smokey. Ottawa's down. The ladder's brought back in the ring. Smokey, the crafty veteran. And Ottawa's trying to get back up, but Smokey might have just done the perfect maneuver to, to keep Ottawa out of the ring long enough for him to, to win this All-American champ, to retain his All-American title. And I believe Smokey just outsmarted Ottawa here tonight. And that's not what you expect in a ladder match, but that's but Smokey is smarter than Ottawa. And I think maybe he caught Ottawa off guard with all of his comments on Twitter about trying to leave him dead. Smokey wanted to retain the All-American Championship here in this ladder match, and he does. And Ottawa is in disbelief at how he has already lost this ladder match. And it's an embarrassing loss for Ottawa. How quick of a ladder match that's going to be. One of the quickest in North American Elite Wrestling history. As Smokey is now celebrating his win. Ottawa is in absolute disbelief. We have to move on. What a quick ladder match here. Ottawa can't believe it. Smokey outsmarted Ottawa here at Beach Blitz. I mentioned the backstory here in the last match between these two men. As we have the entrances here, let me go over it again. These two men, honestly, other than assaulting each other, don't have much personal history and haven't had much to say about each other. Other than, if you're going to attack me, I'm going to attack you. And Mike Ballander obviously attacked Evan O'Shea to get this shot here tonight for the Maple Leaf Championship. And Mike Ballander, I've already mentioned it, we've had two tournaments in North American Elite Wrestling for the All-American Championship and for the United States Tag Team Championship. This man was in the semifinals of both tournaments. Mike Ballander is a threat, a former brutality champion in North American Elite Wrestling, a former new NAW hardcore champion. Mike Ballander could walk away with his first big single championship here in North American Elite Wrestling, or just in Colin General, Mike Ballander. Big opportunity against another legend, Evan O'Shea. Evan O'Shea, a WEDF superstar. That is a, uh, what some people would call the mid-card king. He doesn't win world championships. He's never been the world champion ever, Evan O'Shea. But he has won so many mid-card championships in every promotion that he has been in. He even considers himself the mid-card king. He doesn't even try to travel challenge for the world title anymore because he loves being the mid-card king. Evan O'Shea, the Maple Leaf champion, Defeated. He had actually defeated Ev Aussie Andy for that championship, for that Maple Leaf championship. And that Maple Leaf championship has some very incredible women behind our right, just like all of our North American Elite Wrestling Championships. The Elite here in North American Elite. Evan O'Shea, Mike Ballander, one on one here. Gonna settle what these two men have been going through. I, not, not, like I said, not really a personal issue, just more of a I want to be in your position, and you got to come beat me for it. Evan O'Shea, Mike Ballander, here tonight. Actually, here right about right now. Maple Leaf champion Evan O'Shea, the lightest of our champion of our champions. Saying only, uh, actually, he's Evan O'Shea weighs less than our junior weight champion. That's how much skill is behind Evan O'Shea. I've known Evan O'Shea since he's been a rookie. Mike Ballander here, I've also known for a very, very long time. Actually, he got a start in one of our shows, one of the shows that I produce. So Mike Ballander, I've known almost since the beginning of his CAW career also. Evan O'Shea, Mike Ballander, I know these two men are going to put on a great match because both these men want to be the Maple Leaf champion. One man, really, one man really wants to be it, and one man is it already. It's the story of almost every championship matchup. And I will tell you right now that I think this is probably Mike Ballander's biggest singles match to date. One-on-one. -on -one. He might have had some championship shots in the past. But I believe one-on-one -on -one right now, Mike Ballander is going to have his biggest chance to shine. And there's no, one, there's no one other than Mike Ballander can blame other than himself to lose this matchup. Because one-on-one, -on -one, I believe this is his shot. This is it. Not that he'll never get another shot, but he has. this is the biggest one he's ever had where he can do it all of him. Evan O'Shea, Mike Ballander, bell has rung. You see a goddamn a hip toss right there by Evan O'Shea. 
Mike Ballander gets driven down the ring map by Evan O'Shea already now too. Evan O'Shea, the much smaller man, taking the fight to Mike Ballander. Like we just seen in the last match, again, a little bit more of a size difference here, but not as much as Carter and Gemini had. Still, Ballander, the challenger here for Evan O'Shea's Maple Leaf Championship. Has been in North American League Wrestling since the start. Evan O'Shea, Irish whip. Sleeper slam right there on the Mike Ballander. After this matchup, we have the main event. The World Heavyweight Championship of North American Elite Wrestling. Nate Farron, the champion, against Extreme Tony, the challenger. A man who some says should be the World Heavyweight Champion today got robbed of his shot because of the third man in this matchup, the Mercenary. Yes, you heard me right, the Mercenary. Do, do you not know who that is? We don't either. He's the unknown assailant who has now attacked Nate Farron at, straight, at two straight events. And Nate Farron has actually set, put up a contract to North American Elite Wrestling with the addition that Extreme 20 would get a shot again that why not put this guy in his contract and so there was an extra line there if you guys can figure out where he's at or ever get him a contract if you can't get him to sign it give him the shot and guess what the executive somehow found the mercenary I don't know how but got him to sign a contract and make this a triple threat here tonight Mercenary, some unknown man, could win our World Heavyweight Championship. That's just, that's crazy. That's crazy. Extreme Tony, call veteran, I call, I, I call Extreme Tony. Oh, I wonder what he thinks about this. Because he, honestly, could be World Heavyweight Champion if it wasn't for the Mercenary. A lot of people would argue. And on the Twitter poll, 53% of our voters had said that Extreme Tony would walk away. The North American League Wrestling Champion here tonight. Evan O'Shea bringing a fight to Mike Ballander here on the outside of the ring. I'm mean, the inside and in the, in the inside of the ring. A little rusty doing commentary. Only commentated 15 minutes of call action in the last three or four months. Sorry, maybe three months I think it is. And standing corkscrew moonsault by Evan O'Shea and Mike Ballander. Nice move. One, two. Oh, it almost gets three. And maybe I haven't been giving my credit to this match, but Evan O'Shea must have obviously been bringing a beating down to Mike Ballander. You get a two count right there. Mike, Ball Mike Ballander has gone through a lot of different changes in his career so far in North American League Wrestling. He has kind of found himself in this Minnesota Viking gimmick. Uh, I don't want to really say gimmick on the air, but I mean, he's gone through a few different like looks and everything, personality changes. He, he He's from Minnesota. He found himself in Minnesota as our fans for Vikings, and he... Became Minnesota Viking. And whoa, Mike Ballander. Again, what a move by Ballander. He a little wacky, but he can do he can get it done in the ring. Mike Ballander now, what a, the strength of Ballander being shown here as he goes for this giant swing on Evan O'Shea and just rotating him. The crowd is on their feet for this. Impressive show of strength by Mike Ballander. And Mike Ballander, oh my god, almost had to catch his breath right there. Mike Ballander could, could possibly, possibly put himself at everyone's radar here tonight with a big win. Put himself in the history books with a big win here against Evan O'Shea. Gain the respect of a lot of people I know too, if he could get this win. Evan O'Shea though fights up to his feet. After, uh, Mike Ballander had him in this like, headlock, side headlock maneuver on the ground. Snap here by Evan O'Shea and then delivers a big kick. Evan O'Shea now looking to finish it here. Oh my God! And this is one of Evan O'Shea's finishers. Is Texas Cloverleaf? And will Ballander tap out? Ballander though, get, oh got his hand under the ropes. Didn't get his hand on the rope. Got his hand under the ropes. Evan O'Shea, let's go. Goes for a pin immediately. Only gets two. Evan O'Shea maybe thought he had it there. Maybe he heard something snap and crack that we didn't hear. Ballander able to kick out of that. Kick, kick out after, after two. Impresses me. Ballander now with a back body drop. Actually has Evan O'Shea down. And only, and gets to himself. Almost wins the Maple Leaf Championship right there. Just by tossing Evan O'Shea in the air. And having him drop right in his back. And now these covering elbows and forearms. Right to the shoulders of Evan O'Shea. You're not going to see an offense like Mike Ballander's. In much other places. Because Mike Ballander is unorthodox as they come. Mike Ballander. Picks up Evan O'Shea. What's he got planned here? Tries to whip him, but Evan O'Shea reverses the whip. 
Evan O'Shea. Oh, going for some kind of maneuver, but it's a forearm once again. Mike Valander. Big shot to the gut now by Mike Valander. Evan O'Shea now fighting back. Evan O'Shea with a big drop kick to the back of Mike Valander. I guess we need to get the turnbuckle right there. Evan O'Shea now stomps on the wrist of Mike Valander. Evan O'Shea looking for his finisher. I believe the Brain Buster. Evan O'Shea nails it out of nowhere. Evan O'Shea will recover. Evan O'Shea, is this going to be it for Valander? Standing corkscrew moonsault. Does a little extra damage to Valander. Is this going to be it? And that's it. Evan O'Shea defeats Mike Valander out of nowhere. Oh, my God. Impressive win for Evan O'Shea over Mike Valander here. As we go into the replays here in this matchup. Evan O'Shea, very credible win over Mike Ballander. Mike Ballander looks very good in defeat. And I got to say right now, champions are looking very good in retaining their championship gold here tonight. Because other than the uh, other than the championship change of the kickoff show with Connor James, I think every championship has been retained here tonight. So you got to give the champions credit on that one. Evan O'Shea celebrating a big win over Mike Ballander. As we have to move on to our main event, Triple Threat World Heavyweight Championship matchup. The Mercenary challenging Extreme Tony. And Merc Extreme Tony and the Mercenary challenging Nate Theron for the World Heavyweight Championship. You know, you were thinking our graphic, the world champion would be in the middle. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Extreme Tony, the playmaker, making his way down the ring right now in Long Beach, California. The playmaker of CAW, the icon, Extreme Tony. CCL World Heavyweight Champion, XCWL World Heavyweight Champion, New WWE World Heavyweight Champion, New NAW World Heavyweight Champion. Do I have to tell you how many other World Heavyweight Championships guys won? This guy is no stranger to being a world champion. He is the voters' favorite at 53% to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Extreme Tony, with the crowd support that he garners like no other, he is one of the biggest threats to the World Heavyweight Championship of Nick Ferrin. And to any World Heavyweight title that's out there in call, in call or any promotion. Extreme Tony, one of two challenges of Nick Ferrin's championship here tonight is I don't know how this is going to work out. As the mercenary is going to be making his way down to the ring, I don't know how. Is he in the locker room? And, well, but, oh, there's the mercenary. Coming through the crowd. The mercenary. I don't even know. I, I don't even know if our, if our graphics even have his name or if our, our production team even ever caught his name. This is, this is the mercenary. And we don't know who he is. We just know that he's a threat to the World Heavyweight Championship as of right now because of Nate Barron. And here's something I have not been able to Catch is that I don't know if that's just a tattoo or if that's just if that's body paint and trying to throw us off. This man might be a, t a tatted up guy, and I'm trying to get a look at him. And I just can't figure out who the mercenary is. And we just have to move on. That's the mercenary. I can't tell you much about him. Uh, uh, weight unknown, height unknown. Looks like he could be standing at a good six foot three, six foot four. Could be maybe six foot two. He's a little bit further away than me. Could be staying at like maybe a little higher. I don't know. Maybe 230, 240, 250. Hard to that. Hard to tell what that kind of attire he's also wearing. It's almost everything's covered on him. But here comes our world heavyweight champion, Nate Farron. As the, the fans absolutely love Nate Farron, and he might not be the voters' favorite, but he is the crowd favorite here in this arena tonight. Since Nate Farron has the crowd support that I can see. Definitely, this this crowd here in Long Beach, California, is behind Nate Farron, the North American Week Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. As now Nate Farron. He loves his fans, and he loves being the world heavyweight champion, does Nate Farron. Extreme Tony, one of two challenges for Nate Farron. Nate Farron looks at the mercenary. I have not been able to figure out who the mercenary is. I wonder if Extreme Tony or Nate Farron have been trying to figure it out, or if that's even in their thought process of this world heavyweight championship match here tonight. 
Maybe it doesn't matter to them who they are, who it is. It's just another challenger, or just another, ch just another guy in the way of the World Heavyweight Championship. If you're Extreme Tony, or just another challenger if you are Nate Fair and the, the World Heavyweight Title. And the mercenary with a very cocky like. I don't know who this guy is. How can he be so confident being in the ring with Nate Farron and Extreme Tony? The mercenary. And getting slapped in the back of the head by, by Nate Farron, the World Heavyweight Champion. And Extreme Tony just said he said has, his one goal is to become the World Heavyweight Champion here tonight. So I think he doesn't really care who the mercenary is. Where Nate Farron has promised us all, other than retaining his World Heavyweight Championship, that he, that he plans on figuring out who the mercenary is. He wants to unmask the mercenary for you all here tonight. And the mercenary, well, has not said a word. Or if he has, we don't know who to who or what he said because he is an unknown to all of us, though. Let's just watch his action right there. Mercenary with a nice big move on Extreme Tony. And strangely enough, it looks like the Nate Ferry and the mercenary might actually be working a little bit together here. As Nate Ferry, instead of working with the mercenary, just leaves the ring, I believe. Wait, no, Nate Farron, no disqualification in this triple threat match. I believe he has a different plan. Steel chair in hand. Wait a second, he attacks Tony. Trying to go after Fer go after Tony after the mercenary, but no. Mercenary just leaves the ring. Trying to toss, <laughs> trying to toss Nate Farron a weapon now to go after Extreme Tony with. And when, when Farron doesn't, he catches a chop block by the mercenary. Extreme Tony. And the mercenary doing the smart thing here, letting Nate Farron and Extreme Tony fight it out. Picking his spot, the mercenary is. Though when he thought he'd seen a cover, he got back in the ring. Might have just been playing might have just been playing a trick on the mercenary. Nate Farron was trying to get him back in the ring, and I see he's trying to go after that mask. Nate Farron is every time the mercenary's in the ring. Nice T bone by Extreme Tony under the world champion, Nate Farron. Wants to get I repeat. This is for the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. One of these three men will walk away with the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight title. The only question is, we won't know until after a decision is is made, and one of these men, we don't even know who they are. I don't even know how that works. How did he sign the contract? Uh, did he put his real name on the contract? Did he just maybe put the mercenary, and that's how we got the that's how we got his name? I, I I don't know how we didn't figure out who he, how 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 we figured out who he was a mercenary. This is a lot of unknowns here at North American Link Wrestling. That's all I gotta say. And again, if we if we if we had to know all the answers, maybe this match wouldn't be happening. This has been a great match so far. Accordion backbreaker by Nate Farron on the extreme Tony signature move, but the mercenary tries to steal the cover of Nate Farron's one. Nate Farron, of course, not gonna let that happen. Nate Farron now going after the mercenary. Big back suplex right there onto the mercenary. Nate Ferry now has a, trying, to, trying to rip the mask off of the mercenary and toss him on the outside of the ring. No mercenary hangs on. Nate Ferry, oh my God, what a spear by Nate Finn! And Extreme Tony now has the baseball bat. Oh, but Nate Ferry not letting Extreme Tony do any damage. Don't forget, World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Every man for himself. And I don't know how the mercenary is fighting back out of him. The resiliency of the mercenary being shown. And I don't even know who the mercenary is. Very resilient man to get up after that giant suicidal spear by Nate Farron. And a shoulder lock, a, a nerve lock. And Nate Farron is eyeing up the mercenary. Trying to figure out who this man is, I think. Well, he had that shoulder lock on. And Nate Farron is a taller man than the Mercenary. I think we've already caught that in the, in the last two times we've seen the Mercenary. But now saying, well, I don't know if we ever got to see the two men standing next to each other, though, because the Mercenary is always knocking my, not Nate Farron and flying, flying his back. Extreme Tony was the man standing tall at the last event, though. Extreme Tony has a chance right now to stand tall and win the World Heavyweight Championship here in North American League Wrestling for the first time in his career. And... Mercenary now picking up Extreme Tony after a Nate Farron neckbreaker. Big kick by, by the Mercenary onto Extreme Tony. Goes to the cover. Nate Farron breaks it up. World Heavyweight Championship match still going on here. Beach Blitz main event. And Nate Farron now going after Extreme Tony. 
Extreme Tony though, able to reverse Nate Perrin. The mercenary. Hey. Whoa. Wait a second. I've seen that move here in North American Elite Wrestling before. I've se I've seen that move in North American Elite Wrestling before. I'm just trying to think who did it. Oh my god, I've seen that move in North American Elite Wrestling before. Oh my god, that's I can't figure it out. Big move though. Either way, Extreme Tony probably would not have kicked out of that. As Nick Farron had to break it up. This match continues as I'm trying to recollect where I've seen it. A move like that before, I don't know. I know I've seen it in North American League Wrestling before, though. Big move by the Mercenary and the Extreme Tony. Extreme Tony down. The Mercenary now has Nate Farron. And I gotta say, the Mercenary has been very impressive in this match. Big slam on Nate Farron right there. Mercenary has a steel chair. Assaulting Nate Farron with the steel chair now. Anything goes in the World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat match here tonight. Extreme Tony now going after the Mercenary. Nate Ferry now. Oh, gets caught by Extreme Tony. And Extreme Tony now could be looking for the win here. One of Extreme Tony's finishing moves, the Sharpshooter. If Nate Ferry and Tash will have a new World Heavyweight Champion. And. Oh my god, the Mercenary did not break it up. He cheered on the Sharpshooter. Is the Mercenary trying to win the World Heavyweight Championship? Or does he just care if Nate Farron is the World Heavyweight Champion? I don't know. So many unanswered questions because of the unknown of the Mercenary here. And what's Nate Farron going to do to Extreme Tony right now? And he sets him up specifically on a turnbuckle. What's he going to do to Extreme Tony? Beating on the ribcage. And Nate Farron, what's he going to do to Extreme Tony? Oh, the bicycle kick! Oh, my God! On the Extreme Tony's web cages! Oh, my God! What a kick! Oh, my God! And Extreme Tony's down on the outside of the ring. And his big blood going from Extreme Tony's mouth. And Nate Farron now has the mercenary down. Ripping away at the mask. What a kick. He has the mask off. He has the mask off. It's Joe Omega. Oh my God, Joe Omega. I kicked off by, by Joe Omega to Nate Farron. Not two. Oh my God. I, what? 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 Joe Omega just was fired from North American League Wrestling six months ago! What is he doing here? Joe Omega, a former North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, is here! That's why this man is doing so well in this matchup! Joe Omega is no stranger to this championship! He's the former champion! Joe Omega! That man move I see! It was Joe Omega's finish right in there! The devastating man with Joe Omega! One, two, three! Oh my god, are you kidding me? No way! No way! Yes! Yes, what? Joe Omega! Joe Omega is the World Heavyweight Champion of North American League Wrestling! I am in shock! I'm in disbelief! I don't even know what to say! The replace! The second time we see it in this match! This time without the mask on, I can obviously tell who it is! But I should have known by the first time! Joe Omega now just finished him! Maneuver Extreme Tony on the outside of the ring! Nate Farron down for the three! A shock! An awe maybe! The, the, being driven on his neck! The, the, the championship win of Nate Farron! It's over! And the second championship reign of Joe Omega has begun! Good fight. Good night.